Here's a beautiful modern pergola that we recently built and gave away part of the Lord Mayor's charity appeal. I hosted the auction and one of the prizes was for Mr and Mrs DIY to give away a garden makeover. The family from Liverpool who bidded for it decided that they wanted a wooden pergola. We designed it, constructed it in our workshop and brought it round to install. And here's how we did it. We invited Silverline Tools to come and create their own online video and we shot behind the scenes. We constructed the base in a number of different sections at our workshop. We brought it round, Keith and I placed it into position, screwed it together and then fixed it down to the ground using brackets. We installed four corner post base plates. This is going to have four corners which holds the roof. Then we fitted the floorboards. These were tongue and groove planks. Each strip was glued, fixed down into position using our nail gun. And as you can see, it's already been pre-painted in the workshop. We give it a couple of coats of French Eeks al fresco, wise old sage. We wanted to paint it a couple of weeks earlier so it was fully dry before we started working on it. Next up was the stud work on the rear wall. This again was made out of 4B2 in the workshop. Once it was into position, we could then pin the fascia boards on. These are tantalized fence boards, but they give a great finish to an item like this. Once that was completed, we did the side wall. This again came in two sections, bolted into position and then cladded with the fence panels. Next up was the roof structure. Now this was large 9B2 timbers. These had to be doubled up for the strength. Joist hangers were put in place to hold each timber and they had to be bolted to the frame as well as the posts for additional strength. Noggins were fitted in between the main front post and then that was doubled up and cladded with some nice tongue and groove held into place with 3C's multi-use and a few pins until they were dry. A couple of noggins in between all the roof joist to stop them twisting. Quick reposition of the scaffold tower. Then we boarded over the roof using 8 2 sheets as the weather looked like it was quickly changing on us. And sure enough, the weather did change. So we raced straight back to our workshop and started to build three separate frames to create a louvered wall on the right hand side. We did this out of nice smooth plain down timber. Cut the slats, wedged them in between and fixed them in on an angle with small little noggins in between. Once all three were bolted together, Keith lifted it into position and fixed it to the main legs. Not only do these look great, but they also serve a purpose. They allow the air to come in, but can also hold the intense sun out if needed. A couple of blocks underneath to prop it up off the floor. And then I finished off the trims on the inside. This just covers the joints where the frames meet. Then the final bit of clad notched out to fit in the roof space before I started my painting. I'm putting a dust mask on and my safety specs as I'm using my handheld paint sprayer and using French Eek's chalk paint. This is diluted down a fraction just so it works a bit easier and smoother with my paint sprayer. Once I'd applied the first coat on, going left to right, I did a second coat going up and down. Left this to dry for a couple of hours before applying another coat. Then the smooth woodwork on the louvered frames, I also painted that with Wise Old Sage from the Alfresco range. Before we knew it, the sun was back out and it allowed me to get the first layer of liquid jacket on. This is a liquid rubber waterproof membrane and it's perfect for flat roofs. It's applied on quick and easy with a roller, straight out of the can. Once this was dry the following day, I could apply another coat. I put three coats on it all in all to get a good waterproof finish that's going to last. Final touches up on a few bits of paintwork and then I was ready to apply my furniture wax. I put this on with a brush and I only did the four corner posts. And to be honest, it really makes them stand out, gives it this kind of 3D effect. 
So one final coat of alfresco on the floor and then it's complete. And I'm sure you will agree, this looks a fantastic addition for anybody's garden, which I know will get plenty of use. Now, if you're looking for more inspiration, don't forget to check us out on all social media handles. And if you want to see more of our how-to videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. All the details can be found on our website, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. TV.